Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome to the Call of Duty World War II Multiplayer Open Beta. That's one hell of a long title, and I haven't done a video in a very long time, so I kind of feel a little bit odd at the moment, recording one again, finally. Uh, I've actually been stepping away from YouTube for a, a little while, I've been streaming on Twitch a lot more, so um, the last video that I, I put up, actually, a couple of months ago now, was actually taken from streams and so on. Uh, but anyway, this is the open beta of the new Call of Duty, which is coming out uh, in about a month or so, I think. I can't remember what the release date of this is. I don't research stuff anymore, you know, as know this. Uh, so, it's the Call of Duty formula, sort of tweaked a little bit, and it's set in a di different era, sort of I guess people have been saying going back to its roots, so it's set during the Great World Kerfuffle Part 2, uh, as you can see in the title. So, it's kind of... It's kind of going back to its roots and kind of not. And I have a number of issues with this beta, so I don't want to take too long with this intro bit because... There is a very big performance issue with this. Every, like, three rounds or so, or at least after three rounds, the performance starts to shit its pants. And I have no idea why the game normally runs at about 130 FPS for me, to give you an idea. So I'm, I'm going to be playing this on normal uh, graphics, so heads up for anybody in case you're wondering why the game doesn't look that great. It's because it's running on the minimum settings to help it last a little bit longer. It doesn't seem to help that much, but in my mind, maybe it will. So, here we go. Alright, first things first, you might notice, this is the creator class screen. Well, kind of, yes and no, it isn't. So, there are things that are named a little bit differently. You now have this division system, which is basically uh, different classes. Except it isn't. Uh, so, it's a little bit a little bit complicated, so bear with me. Uh, so you pick your division here, and each one has its own tier of unlock. So, by the way, this one is made by Sledgehammer, who did the fantastic uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which I absolutely loved, even if the PC port was a bit meh. Um, they made this one. So the multiplayer isn't bad, and there's a new mode in it that I will show off uh, a bit later on. Uh, so, the infantry is the sort of basic, uh, I guess, versatile class, I'm not really too sure. It has a, a unique unlock, like all of them have unique unlocks, and I do want to eventually get to that point, but I doubt I'll be able to do it before the beta ends. Uh, so airborne are uh, your SMG guys, infantry is sort of a mix between rifles uh, and assault rifles, uh, armoured are basically all LMGs. Uh, which I actually kind of like. I like one of the LMGs in there. Uh, the mountain division is your uh, snipers, and expeditionary are your shotgun users. So they're they're all they all play a little bit differently, and they but these are just a perk sort of perk deck that you pick. You then have an actual perk here, which is the basic training ribbon, which allows you to then take your uh, for example uh, two primary weapons, which I believe used to be called overkill in uh, in the other cool duties. And you've got other things besides. So, uh, espionage just shows up enemy score streak. So you will take a little bit more time reading the descriptions of things, just trying to re-familiarize yourself with things. One thing that, that is good about this is they're using the unlock point system, which you can see at the top right here. Uh, you get unlock points and you can put that into whatever you want. And I love that system. It came in with Black Ops and I loved it then and I love it now. You get to unlock things in the order that you want. And there are plenty of these things, so you're not really lacking for stuff. Now, uh, with the armor division, I can actually pick any weapon I want. I can equip myself with a grease gun if I so choose. Uh, I like going with the MG15. Um, I prefer putting the quick draw and grip on here. All of the attachments kind of work the same way as they used to. You even have your ACOGs and so on. Reflex sights, even though I don't really believe these things existed in World War II. But we'll gloss over that. Most of the attachments and stuff are exactly as... Uh, you might remember them. So they have rank locked and token locked um, unlocks throughout all of this. So some of these weapons here are locked behind your rank, like the M1903 here. Um, and, uh, and so are some of the attachments. But they also have a weapon level, which I'm going to talk about later on. Um... Oh, actually, no, I can talk about it now. Um, <laughs> um, can you tell I haven't recorded for a while? Uh, weapon levels, basically, any score that you get while using this weapon, be it assists, kills, and so on, 
are uh, go towards this weapon XP, which will go towards unlocking attachments for that weapon. So if you want a weapon to be better, you have to use that weapon more, which I always thought was a little bit backwards, but whatever. Um, that is basically how it works. This HQ thing that you can see here basically is just your appearance. So the appearance that you have in lobbies is based on that, uh, which is not really that important. Now they have brought back something from Advanced Warfare, which I thought was kind of cool. The selection of characters. So you have different faces that you can pick from. You can make yourself... There are, there are female soldiers as well. Um, you can make yourself look however you want. Um, and it doesn't really affect anything. One thing I will say that's a bit weird about the beta is that, uh, oh, you can change your appearance based on your division as well. So I can make myself a US tanker or one of the desert rats. Um, all these appearance-based things, they don't affect the Axis side. These are all the allies only, but you do play as the Axis versus the allies. So there is a faction that you can't pick anything for, which I thought was a bit strange, but I'm not sure why they've done that. Um, but that's a bit, that's a, it's a bit weird. So let's just get into a match and I'll talk a bit more about it as we go. Uh, so these are the playlists that you can join into. Team Deathmatch, Domination, Hardpoint are all here. You've also got the Mosh Pit, which is your randomized selection of modes. This is the new one though. War Mode is an objective-based mode, which is not something they've done before. So let's queue up for that and I'll talk about it as we get in. And we are in. We're playing on the Axis team, so we're defending this time. That is really, really loud. I mean, I'll probably have fixed that in editing, but um, that was really, really loud. So this is definitely a different mode to what you might be used to in, in normal Call of Duties. Um, there's enemies over there. I'm trying to- Ooh, I got two kills already! I don't suck at this! You also might notice, the graphics don't look too bad. I think it's the same engine from Black Ops 3? I don't know that for sure, though. Oh, I've been killed. I don't know that for sure. Oh, that's another thing as well. The freaking headshot thing. I don't know if you saw that in the bottom left there. Because the kill feed fades away far too quickly. Like, I don't even have time to look at it. Um before it goes away. Yeah, but the, the headshot icon, that's something that I, I thought was a bit weird about Call of Duty's always, uh, is that they, instead of showing, like, you don't need to know what weapon killed you, just that you got hit in the head by it, right? I, I, I know Call of Duty isn't the first franchise to have done, oh, that's a friendly, uh, franchise to have done that. Uh, I think it actually started back in the Counter-Strike days of 1.5, 1.6, and so on. Uh, they, they did that as well. But it's always a bit weird. But anyway, that's just me rambling. Uh, so, a couple of things have changed from previous games as well. Aside from this mode, they have changed some of the controls, and I thought that was a bit strange. So pardon me while I go away from the uh, fight a little bit just to talk about it. So, I'm hitting F, and nothing is happening. Right? Um, let me just throw a grenade in there. Nice little pulse there, lets you know how many seconds. Alright, now we have to fall back because we lost the command post. Uh, if I don't re make it back in time, I'm going to die. I thought it was a bit weird. I was like, there's no melee attack in, in Call of Duty now. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, here's where it is. It's bound on Q. And there are two different melees in this game now. Uh, so you have your butt stroke, which isn't just a funny thing to say. It's actually the uh, hitting them with the butt of your weapon, which doesn't insta-kill. It does like, I think 50% of the normal damage. All right, so there's half time. We managed to hold them up to this point, and then it'll swap sides. And of course, the winning team is the one that scores better on each half. Yeah, overall, well, that's my score. I don't, I'm not sure about the team. Um, yeah, there you go, objective performance. So you can see how long you actually held each point for. All right, so I'm going to switch over to the uh, the infantry just to kind of show you some of the differences. Our mission is to destroy a One thing you might be wondering about as well is where all of the explosives are. Now you have your grenades and you do have the usual assortment of concussion and normal grenades and sticky grenades and so on. They are pretty much just World War II themed versions of everything else that has been in every Call of Duty since. Now, bayonet charge looks like this. 
Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that we're playing Battlefield 1, because it looks exactly the same. Not that that's a complaint, really. It's just, well, how else would a bayonet charge look? But it is interesting in the way it, it, it sort of performs. Yes, it does normally set you on fire. It's very weird, that. No, um... It seems like the mountain class... Not mountain. Uh, expeditionary class with the shotguns actually does... Um counter you quite effectively because they're very they're, they're able to do very quick and large amounts of damage at close range so they actually do counter the bayonet charge quite effectively all right we managed to get rid of him and him even though i wanted to show a bayonet but it doesn't matter i quite like this gun it's a side mounted magazine it kind of looks pretty cool So yeah, spray and pray. Oh, there's a Sturmgewehr. So this is in the game. I've never used one before. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, um, there are also, um, like, class-based perks. Or abilities, rather. So the bayonet charge is unique to the infantry, but each class has its own sort of unique ability that they can use. So the LMG can deploy a bipod to be, you know, particularly stable. It can basically be a makeshift MG post, which is really cool. Hey, I stabbed him, and then I got killed. So I'll show you what I mean by picking a different class. Let's go to the airborne. So this is your SMG class. This is where your PPSHs and grease guns and Probably the Thompson and so on. Thompson, oddly enough, isn't actually in this yet. Uh, but they, that's where they probably will be. But you can add a suppressor, which hides you from the minimap. Works exactly the same as suppressors worked in every other Call of Duty. But this is now not something you can attach to every single weapon. As you know, suppressors in World War II weren't exactly the most common thing. So, this being restricted to this class kind of makes a little bit of sense. It's... Not exactly historically accurate by any stretch, but you know what? It works. We'll give him a pass for it. So I don't think I can shoot through the walls with this. But yes, it does decrease your accuracy, damage, and so on, uh, exactly as you would expect. There's an MG post up there. I'm going to try throwing a grenade up there. I threw that too high. Now, MG posts can be destroyed using launchers. And you might be wondering, where are all the launchers? Well, here they are. So if I go to the armored one here, uh, you can actually see basic training launch. That gives you a bazooka in your a secondary slot. Now, I'm going to wait till I respawn in order to do that. Um, which is going to happen now, so that's fine. Got a Bren with an extended mag here, I think. Yeah, that is a Bren. Um... Have to look through the sights to know for sure. But so, if I wanted to take out an MG post, I could just shoot at it there. And that would actually destroy the the MG nest completely. And they would have to... Uh, they would actually have to rebuild it. Which is actually a cool little feature. Now, the bazooka itself... I'm not sure how effective it is against infantry, because I haven't been able to hit anyone with it, bizarrely enough. Um, its ammunition is limited, you only get two shots by default. I'm just gonna fire it there. And nothing happened. But you can resupply it by getting kills with your primary weapon, which is a bit of an interesting way of doing that. That's a person on top of a tank. This tank, um, is an MG post? Question mark? Um, yeah, we have to blow up this ammo dump and then we'll be able to advance. Oh yeah, we can build barricades as well. So if that's something you really want to do, you can barricade the walls. Kind of an interesting little feature. I kind of like it. Oh, I got sniped. No wonder he wasn't in there anymore. Now, as I said, you can deploy bipods as well. And you can deploy them almost anywhere. Not exactly anywhere, but anywhere that's sort of like a chest height wall. Like, I think some vehicles let you do it too, which is kind of interesting. Now we have to escort that, so there's a payload to escort. Now in Call of Duty, you too can stay off the payload. Um, but yeah, so you do need to stick with the tank, stay close to it, let it move forward, and so on. Um, shall we have a look at a sniper? Let's have a look at a sniper. So, this I believe is an on-field? 
Are they unfilled mark, uh, num number four? Possibly? I don't know. Um. Oh, look at that! I will never do that again. Or that. So I can just prone down here and put a, um... A bipod down and just sort of do this. So you do have that sort of battlefield style almost. Um... MG use, which I think is kind of cool. It is very, very quick to mount and dismount, so... There isn't really too much of a downside to actually waiting to use it. <laughs> this guy's name's Dixie Wrecked. Get it? Get it? Because it's a penis joke. <laughs> Alright, so there's something I wanted to show off with the expeditionary troop. Is you have these, like, incendiary shells, so you can load them in. And they do fire damage. Because, you know, that's what incendiary means. Which, I guess on some guns is going to be more effective than others. Um, I wonder if I can blow up this wall. Let's try that. Well, it bounced off, so I'm probably not going to find out now. Uh, let's just shoot randomly into the smoke. Okay, let's climb through there and then shoot randomly into the smoke. Oh, I got someone! So, yeah. Uh, for some shotguns, it's probably going to be more effective, since it lets you sort of finish them off with, like, damage over time. See, that guy's on fire. It does, like, a, like two seconds of damage. Um, so, of course, if they're weakened already, then, you know, it will probably do more. This is not going to be particularly helpful for me. As you might imagine. You don't get a hell of a lot of them. I think you only get, like, four shots with it. So, I thought I'd try sniping again, since that seemed to work so well against me earlier. Uh, this guy seems to be doing that already. Alright, let's have a look here. Now, I know there's... There's an MG post somewhere here, so I'm going to shoot in that direction. And I got one. Through the trees. This is a semi-auto sniper rifle. So, it is kind of quick firing and stuff. It doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage, though. And I don't know if there's bullet drop in this, but I feel like there is. And I've been killed. The only downside of, of being a sniper means that... You you, you're a lot further away from the objective, so you can't really be as useful in that sense. There's a lot of smoke in that area. So there is somebody building. Oh, I got him! I'm okay with this. So we need to kind of get there and build a bridge as quickly as we can. So, basically, you just sort of get over here, and you press and hold, and you build! Yes, hit the bridge with a hammer! That's how this works! Honestly, we're all about to die. But we've almost got it, so, I mean... Now you've got this sort of overtime thing that Overwatch does as well, uh, which didn't quite work in our case, but, you know... So yeah, overall, I do actually kind of enjoy some of the new things in this. It, it's it's quite interesting. The, the new mode in particular, I really enjoy. But I honestly don't see this lasting all that long, especially on PC. I mean, Call of Duty on PC hasn't had historically the best sort of lifespan. And uh, frankly, I don't see this being any different. In fact, it has about the same lifespan as I do playing as... Um, well, an SMG user. Basically, I'm not really too keen on spending about $60 on a game that might not have people playing in the next six months or so. Not that, you know, I don't think the game is going to be popular. It's more that on PC anyway, it tends to... Ooh, I got, a, I got an incendiary kill. <laughs> that was a bit of a dick move, I will admit. But yeah, I do, don't really think it'll do that well in PC, because it never really does. So, I don't know. Some good ideas, I guess, but overall, not exactly what I'd be looking forward to. And honestly, this beta does have a number of issues. I was actually looking at streaming this. Oh, God. And uh, after a friend of mine tried to and had three crashes in the space of about half an hour, I decided, you know, maybe I don't want to do that. That's kind of why I made this video. Hi. Hi. Let's build this wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. 
There we go. I, I love how there's an there was an enemy like very blatantly right there. Oh, he's inside. Well, you know, can't win them all. So yeah, that's Call of Duty World War Two. I'm gonna go in here now and uh, get myself killed. Bye bye.